Hello and welcome to today's video. You see the scenery is a little bit different. Today we're going a little bit different approach to the video um, because I got a toy here. I have got this S7-1200 PLC and I want to um, get into it with you together. We are looking what's inside, right? I want to see what's inside this PLC. Um, it is not working currently and I hope we can make it work. Um, or we at least find what's going on, find out what's going on with this. So you see my little factory, <laughs> just the background picture. Um, I will put this on my table now and then I'll switch to the camera mode on the table. So you won't see me. That was just for the intro here. Uh, but we will look what's inside of that thing. So here we go. Camera down. I hope my camera setup works because I did test it. Now I build it up and... I rarely film on my table. So here we have the PLC, right? the 1200 PLC, as you can see. Um, well, it looks pretty new, but it is internally broken, so it does not really work. And you can see, what can you see here actually? We've got a Somatic S7 1200. It is the type CPU 1214C DC DC DC. The first DC indicates, hey, we have a DC power supply going in. It runs on 24 volts. The second DC indicates that the inputs so this side here works with 24 volts and the last DC actually says that the outputs those also work with 24 volts. There's also this DC AC where you have DC supply, DC inputs and AC outputs. Stuff like this. There's different combinations that's why we have this. DC 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 is my preferred one because then everything's 24 volts, everything's fine. So on this side we also have some data that can all be read using the online function if this PLC works. If you need this data you actually have to um, sometimes actually take it out of your system because this side is where additional modules go. So here additional I.O. modules will go to the right side. Additional communication modules if you need profi bus go on this side. As well on this side we also have this cap where we have a bus connector that automatically goes in here if you connect the module from the left side. What else do we have on here? If I look on the bottom, every S7-1200 comes with an RJ45 connector with Ethernet connection, or in our case, Profinet, because we're using the Profinet protocol. Yeah, so from the outside, the first thing I can see is um, this is missing here, right? This lid is missing, which is not, well, that's nothing. It's just a plastic lid. This plastic lid I can also take, I would have to take off of the other side here if I would need to connect other components, just simply using a screwdriver, popping it off, here it comes off. And now I could put more I.O. modules on this side. So the plastic cap does not really matter. <clears throat> so that's not a thing why it would be broken. Next thing I can do here is actually those plastic doors, I can just simply take off. They are, you can bend them a little bit, you can see it here. Those are bendable, so you can bend them to the left side or to the right side and just take them out. Pretty simple, pretty easy. So I'll take those. I'll need them later on. The next thing is, yeah, I can already see one problem that we might have here. Um, you see down here we have screw terminals. Right? We have screw terminals for the outputs and we do not have those screw terminals here for the inputs. Those are just pin headers. So what we can still do on the upper side here is we can basically solder a wire or if you have pin jacks, like, like connectors like I do right here, I, would, I could connect them just directly with this. And now, yeah, it's on there. I could connect it like this and now this side I could connect the sensor to or uh, the input or the output. Right. Those are spare parts basically, those, those terminals. You can, there's a little slit, it's hard to see, there's a little slit here in the center, I can just go in there and just pop it off. Just lift it, just, just use a little bit of force and then it comes off. Right. And then I have this, so it's not mandatory but it's nice to have terminals. Especially those little screw terminals, I like them a lot. <clears throat> so, I just took it off because, well, we're disassembling everything. So next thing that we can disassemble here, that we can take off, is this last plastic lid here. I can just pop it off with my finger. I can just pop it off with my finger. And this little plastic lid hides a connection slot. There's some pin connections here. We can also get I.O. modules or communication modules that go directly in this space, which makes it very compact, the 1200 
you could add more IOs just directly here without making it bigger and bigger. That's quite nice. Of course, it's limited. Yeah. So far, nothing is broken. I mean, the terminals were missing, but that's fine. It works without. I, I had them working without. Next thing that we need to do is opening this up. Right? This little gray box here, um, it's actually not too expensive. Well, not too expensive for a PLC. Like if you take a microcontroller, microcontroller is 20 bucks, uh, approximately 20 euro, 20 dollars, approximately. Um, this one here is, you can get it for 100 euro, 100 dollars ish, maybe 200, 100 until 200. Of course, there's different sizes, but this one um, was cheaper because it's broken, but they are not too expensive. The 1200 is pretty cheap. So I want to open this up and you can see here on this side, I have little slots where I can push my screwdriver in, slot where I put, can push my screwdriver. And I put a little bit of force and you can see, I just lift it a little bit here like this and lift it. And you can see this side already pops off. Now the other side is still um, latched. So I do the same on this side. Here we go. What I can already see is there are some marks already on here. So someone already popped that off, but that's fine. So I now have this plastic lid. Right. This plastic lid here is just, well, it would work without, right? This is just plastic. Right? <clears throat> Some fiber thingies here to actually have the LEDs connected to the outside. We would not need this. We would not need this. This needs to be popped. This needs to be turned around. Here we go. So, the first layer we see here, this up here is actually the most important part of the PLC, this here. This Microchip that you see is the core. This is the CPU. This is this is the core. This is the calculation unit basically There's others of course There's a lot of components in here that are for calculating for storing for this one is RAM one is ROM and so on and so on Can't go into detail with this because I also don't know the details The most important one is the one that says in big fat bold letters Siemens so and there's also some capacitors, so some electrical stuff going on here. I can't go into detail because I don't have the wiring plan. It doesn't look too complicated, actually. So that's the first layer. You can see this is built up in layers. And the top layer I can basically simply take off. I just got to be a little bit careful because I don't want to bend anything. I don't want to destroy anything. A little bit careful because it's all just connected by um, by push connections, push in connections. You can see that worked. What I can see here already is that this side is a little bit bent. The this is just the bus connector that comes from the right side for the I/O modules. I can just bend it back. It's not no nothing to worry about. This is fine. All the connections seem okay. Also from the back side, you see a lot of electrical components. Just this. Huge bar is the connection to this, so to our lower side. So this is actually the next level is our I/O modules. So this level here is our CPU. That's the most important level. You can see also data connections, uh, communications, and so on go in here. And what I can see here is that um, so this is the connection for I/Os, and we also have logic and. Uh, um, logic and 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 power connection and so on and you see those are I, I don't know if you can see it on video but those are pretty bent and there's even some connections missing so those are definitely broken so i think this is already the problem and i do not have spare parts for this i need this block basically with five times five connections and i basically get those off and those connections i can get off i can just rip them apart uh desolder it actually and solder one of those blocks, which makes the connection way easier because what we see on the lower side, so I can't do that right now because I don't have the spare parts, but that's probably the problem. But let's still go on. So that's my CPU part, right? That's my CPU part. <clears throat> Next part, and every electrician would now yell at me because my table here is not grounded and everything, everything, it's not AESD proof, but that's fine. <laughs> it's broken anyway. <clears throat> So the next part that we have is the center level. And I can just, again, take that off. The center level connects to the lower level back here. And this center level is we have our I.O. card, right? We have on top here inputs and out, uh, inputs, and we have on our lower part outputs. I think there's also some analog inputs. This is also analog inputs here. 
right? So analog in and output card. That's basically our I.O. card. You can see every I.O. channel actually has little circuitry protecting it and also evaluating it. Right? On the back side, we have just more because it just doesn't fit all on one side. You can actually see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That is exactly our input amount. So we have our input card here. Input output card. So if anything with the inputs and outputs would be broken, I could just exchange that. But the whole thing doesn't work because the highest level, the, peer, the CPU level, cannot connect to the host anymore. Good. And that's the that's the I/O level, and we have one more level down there. This is the power supply level there on the left, on the right side. I can just take. There's one little lever that I can put that, can, that I can pull, and that disconnects everything here. And I have this whole. Um, printed circuit board, right, a printed circuit board. You can see those components are all pretty big because that's for the power supply with our little transformer here, for example. And um, I can only guess what most of those components do, but you see big connectors that actually distribute the power to the other levels. So I will pop that back in, right, goes like this, slides in here, and I just push it down till I hear the click from the lever. Click, lever is there, so this is now connected again. I will also reconnect my center level, so power supply level. I have I.O. module level, which I will pop here again. Which is that the right way? That is the right way. Just want to be careful because I think I can repair it, <laughs> so I don't want to break too much. So if I slide it in, what you can see is on the top left, in those slots, you can actually see the little legs from the lowest side connecting, sliding in. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but now they are stay out here. Uh, they've slided out, so now it's connected. And I will also connect my PLC, uh, my CPU level here again, my logic layer, um, putting it up there. But I know those are broken and I know I need to get the replacement. Um, basically, this module here just in short with 10 connections and I will just resolder it there. Shouldn't take too much, but I don't have it in storage here. So I'll pop that back in. Now I just need to be careful that I don't bend anything more. Yeah. It should just slide in. Now it's slided in. It still moves a little bit because it's just connected through those pins, which I don't really like, I gotta say, but that's what it is. And now I can also pop my cover here. I can put my cover again. I just slide it on. And I can see connected here again, connected here again, and we're fine. The rest is just the plastic parts that I need to connect. Plastic cap goes back here. My pin connectors, my terminal goes here, and I can just slide it on. Maybe interesting here, there's this little, this little fin in the center. Hard to see. There's a little fin right in the center, right behind my thumb. Now, now you can see it actually. Um, this goes in, there's a socket here, there's a place here in the center as well. That goes in there and then you just push it in. I don't know if I can do it, if I can see it, but it just goes in there and I just push it in and done. So this is what I also need to do with the replacement. I will try to get a replacement here as well. They're not too expensive. It's just a terminal, just a little bit of plastic and um, copper inside. Here we go, got that, pop that on here, pop the other plastic on here. Uh, you should not do that too many times with the plastic here cause it will bend and it could break at some point. And also the last part would be my plastic lid here. I can just put my plastic lid uh, for in front of the bus connector and click and the PLC is reassembled. Yeah, I think I can repair it. I will just get the um, other component, the, the pin connectors and that should be it. Yeah. Um, so much for the hardware here, what's inside. Pretty cool stuff if you ask me. Um, but in detail, of course, you can't explain that in like 15 minutes. Um, yeah. So, back. Is there anything else for my, for my, um, maybe just this. I forgot to mention there's this micro memory, there, there's this MC memory card slot. This memory card slot is there for all 1200s, but it's optional. You don't need it. It has internal storage. So one of the little integrated circuits that I showed you is actually an integrated circuit where the 
where already there's something like a memory card integrated. Good. Back to the big camera. Back to me. So that is what is inside of this 1200 PLC S7 1200. Um, S7 1200. Yeah. 1214 C DC DC DC. Um, I will try to get the spare parts. I will try to repair it and show you the results or actually make a video about uh, repairing it. Now I broke a little bit of plastic off. No, I did not. It just made click. <clears throat> yeah, I hope this was a little bit interesting for you. I know it's not the most important stuff, but it's still interesting to see what is inside of those things. Um, if this is any helpful to you, if this was mildly interesting, leave a like. Do not forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.